one of the biggest success factors in dropshipping is avoiding mistakes. I'm gonna show you the top mistakes that I made and I see other people making that'll help you lead to success in dropshipping a lot faster. Now this video is gonna be packed with a ton of information. So I recommend getting out a pen and a piece of paper, taking some notes and following this step by step. It's gonna save you so much time and so much money. These are the things that I wish I knew when I was starting out dropshipping because it would've made my life so much easier. And now I'm ready to share them with you because my end goal is to help you guys scale to $100,000 a month. Let's jump right into this list. Here's one of the most common things that I see people do incorrectly with dropshipping, infringing on other people's copyright. And this can mean infringing on anything from a big brand like Disney or a smaller brand that you've got some inspiration from. So there's actually people in dropshipping that have been sued by these companies because they're selling unlicensed product or they were copying their images or they're copying the product outright. And I personally have some experience with this. My very first store was an AirPod replica store. I got the idea from another website where I saw people dropshipping. I thought I could just source these AirPods and name them something else and then use different photos and everything would be okay and make some money on it, right? This store did have some success, but I literally got a cease and desist letter from Apple. So this totally shut down my entire operation. It was a bit of a bummer because I was making a decent amount of money on it just on the side at the time. The moral of the story here is that you cannot copy products. Some things that you can't do. Licensed products such as Marvel or Disney products are all licensed and they tend to actually come after people that dropship them without a license. It works, buddy. I have more than enough <laughs> words to describe you, stock. So avoid those at all costs or anything that's IP related. Obviously, fair use and parody is a thing. If you're making fun of something, a song or something like that, this can be used, but take this with a grain of salt. I'm not a lawyer, but I personally would just stay away from all this altogether. So make sure whatever you're selling is not someone else's and especially if you have photos from them. You cannot take people's photos. So anytime that you have a photo that's stolen from someone else, they can actually report it to Shopify and you get a DMCA takedown notice. And what that is, is basically Shopify gives you 48 hours to delete the product, delete the photo. Otherwise they're going to shut down your store and it's actually kind of hard to get back. So take your own photos. And that's why I push heavily for people to make their own custom content, especially when doing ads and the photos on your website. Keep in mind that the suppliers that you're getting products from the dropship, they sometimes steal photos too. In Shenzhen, there are different business laws, which is where a lot of the dropshipping products product comes from. So sometimes they'll actually take photos that are someone else's and use them to advertise their products to you. And a lot of the time these cannot be used if they're stolen from someone else. So be very careful, always take custom content if you're not sure, or have your supplier retake the photos themselves. The next biggest mistake that I see people doing is running their websites too soon. I know everyone's super eager to get going and drop shipping. I was myself. I wanted to like make my site on Shopify as fast as I could, the best way that I could. I wanted to test all of these products and run so many ads and spend a thousand dollars a day like instantly. That's just not how it works and it's not the best practice. You need to thoroughly think out every single aspect of your dropshipping store and company. And the reason for this is because a lot of people lose money right off the bat by not preparing. They'll just hop right into it, start running ads, spend $200 a day, only get like five sales, not break even, and then they say it's a scam. That's not the case. It's because you didn't take time to perfect your store, run it by a couple of experts or friends and family that can review your website for you to see if it's credible, if it looks legit, if it looks good. You didn't have the proper ad copies in place. You didn't have the proper ad strategy in place. Everything you just went out on a whim or took strategies a little bit from here and there, uh, stuff you've read online that could be outdated too. My best advice for that is to learn every strategy, learn the best ways to build a website, the best ways to advertise on Facebook, the best ads to use that are engaging and creative. Trust me, when you launch after doing all of these things properly, it's gonna pay off way more and you're gonna actually get some sales and you probably will start making money versus when you just do it on a whim real quick and throw it up there and start spending money on ads. That's just not how it works. This isn't really 2017 anymore. People want high quality websites, high quality ads good pricing, good marketing. And this kind of takes me to the next subject of keeping a log. One of the things that I wish I did in the beginning was keeping a log of the ads, the variables that I'm testing, meaning the interest targeting, age groups, all of that stuff. You need to keep a log, write it down on an Excel sheet, Word, pen and paper, whatever you need to do. Keep a log of the things that you've tried and how the results came out. Otherwise, you're gonna spend so much time testing all these variables and you don't even know which one helped you or which one hurt you. And it's just a waste of money and a waste of time. So keep track of everything that you're doing. The next thing that I wanna talk about is the lack of customer service. This personally happened to me. After my AirPods controversy, I made my second site and it took two and a half months of breaking even to finally become profitable. And I was so excited and so stoked ready to scale, ready to make more money, and just to see how much that I could actually make drop shipping at the time. After two and a half months of breaking even, the first day I made like 50 bucks, and then three weeks later, I hit my first net $1,000 profit day, 
which is an insane amount of scaling in a short amount of time. I scaled really aggressively. It was great because I was making more money, but at the same time, it was causing so many headaches because there were so many customers that were coming in so fast and I was only one person. I couldn't handle it all myself. I didn't have the email automation in place. I didn't have anyone helping me out with customer service. I didn't have like a frequently asked questions page. I had nothing. So what you need to do is have these set in place beforehand or when you first start getting some sales on your store and you're wanting to scale. Before you scale, I really recommend doing this. I recommend putting email automation in place so when someone emails you, you can reply with something as simple as a frequently asked questions page. It can direct them to the correct person to talk to. But basically, if you just have a frequently asked questions page automated every time someone replies and they say you can reply to them, and then it says if you need further help, please email this specific email, that weeds out a lot of the customer service and makes it a lot easier on you, less headaches. And now I do have someone working for me, so customer service is a lot easier. Just don't make the mistake of scaling aggressively without this in place. Now that you're making sales, your website looks great, money's rolling in, you need to think about bookkeeping. I came from a supply chain background, so working heavily in Excel was pretty much my day to day. So I'm very used to working with numbers, keeping track of spreadsheets, uh, financial ledgers, things like that. So right the very first day I started making money, I actually started my own personal finance spreadsheet, I guess. Uh, and every single day I keep track of things like how much the Shopify fees were, the, what the revenue was, how many orders I had, how much my advertising cost was, what was the product cost, blah, 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 all, all of that. So I've kept track of that day one and I recommend you do that too. When you become successful in dropshipping, you start making real money, you have to file taxes, right? And it makes it a hundred times easier if you have all this information backed up already to send over to your accountant or if you don't have an accountant it still makes it way easier to do taxes at the end of the year otherwise you're gonna be scrambling and trying to pull different files and go back in time to see what you made overall when in theory you can really just keep track of it as you go every day a little bit of work and then at the end of the year it's a breeze you just export a couple of different files and send them off to your accountant do your write-offs all that stuff and you're good to go business write-offs is another thing you need to keep track of everything that's an expense to run your business this is marketing this is buying a new laptop but if you're worried about taxes at the end of the year like I was saying I do have an accountant and I wouldn't personally worry about getting an accountant or a professional until you're making consistent sales I would say once you're starting to make around 50 to $100 a day I would look into getting a CPA or talking to a tax professional paying for Wi-Fi your cell bill whatever you use your car depending on what your business is you want to keep track of all these because they all are write-offs the next thing is once your business is up and running you've got all these things I just talked about set in place the next thing you don't want to miss out on, and this is just a freebie, it's credit cards. I do talk a lot about credit cards on my TikTok page, on my YouTube page, and they're very important. And the reason for this is because it's literally free money. So for example, the first month I scaled my store to the $1,000 profit days, I didn't have a credit card. I was pulling it right out of my regular bank account. I missed out on so much spend on a credit card. If you're spending a lot of money on advertising and product costs and Shopify fees, I would really recommend you considering getting a credit card once you start making consistent sales. For example, if you have a business gold card from American Express, the first $150,000 that you spend on advertising, you get four times points on. They always have a bunch of welcome bonuses and all this stuff. Depends on how much you scale your store, you can get anywhere from 1,000 to 20,000 extra dollars in points at the end of the year, which is a massive amount of money that you can use to travel, you can use to buy equipment, you can do whatever you want with it, it's your money. It's my money and I need it now! So just don't make the mistake of that. A lot of people are scared to get credit cards because they think you have to rack up the bills and then pay them off and you're in debt. That's just like not the case. I personally pay my credit cards off every single day so I'm on top of it and I would recommend that you do the same. The next thing I want to talk about is reinvesting into your business. I recommend starting off with a certain bank account set up just for your business ventures. This is what I did. Every single dollar that flowed in there I did not touch. Do not touch thee! Because I did have a job at the time that was supplementing my regular income. So having a separate bank account, every dollar in and out was business related. This allowed me to use that money and utilize it and reinvest in my business by buying better equipment, buying better products, buying a better camera to take product photos on, and just buying anything that I needed. And over time I watched this account grow and having a separate bank account really helps with taxes at the end of the year as well because everything that is in and out of that account is business related it makes it a lot easier if you ever have to dig through and prove that you spent money on something you don't want to mix business money with the money that you spend on going out and things like that it just gets complicated so that's my list of the biggest mistakes i see beginners make in drop shipping I really strongly encourage you to take everything I said today very seriously because I promise that it will help you in the end. It'll make your dropshipping career a lot easier and allow you to achieve success even quicker. These are the things that I wish I knew personally starting off, so I just wanted to share them with you and hopefully it helps you guys out.
If this video is helpful for you, please leave a like. That really helps me out. I really appreciate that. And remember to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications if you're interested in my videos. And then please leave any comments that you have below with any questions that I maybe didn't answer or any videos that you want to see in the future. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day.